In this tutorial, we're going to look at refraction of water waves. And the main concept here is what happens when waves are traveling from a deep region to a shallow region or from a shallow region to a deep region. Let's start with deep to shallow. Now, obviously, in a real situation, the um, if it was, say, a beach, the um, uh, land would be getting, um, or the, the water level would be getting shallower and shallower and shallower um, gradually. Now, to simplify things, let's imagine that this line here represents a boundary between deep and shallow. In the deep region, we have water waves coming in, and looking from the top down, they have a constant wavelength, and the wavelength here I'm going to call lambda 1. The question is, what happens to the, the speed and the wavelength and the frequency when the waves cross this boundary? In fact, to make this more realistic, this could be, for example, a reef. So let's imagine that we've got like a, a reef sitting in here where the, the water level changes quite dramatically from deep to shallow. Okay, so we've got one lambda 1 and the velocity of the wave in this direction we're going to call v1. <clears throat> Now, on the other side, what actually happens is the waves will slow down. And because they slow down, the wavelength will reduce. So you can see here now in my second drawing, on the shallow side, I'm drawing the wavelength smaller. And, uh, and as I said before, it's because the wave slows down from deep to shallow. So here's our lambda, our wavelength 2 and V2 as well. So why is it that the waves slow down? Well, the reason why the waves slow down and uh, the wavelength reduces is due to the formula V equals F lambda. Okay, so this idea again of refraction, but instead of talking about a wave, like a light wave, slowing down, going from an optically uh, less dense medium to an optically more dense medium. In this case, we're talking about a water wave slowing down, going from deep to um, to a shallow region. Now, looking at this, V equaling F lambda, uh, that means that uh, V1 is going to be equal to F lambda 1, and V2 is going to be equal to F lambda 2. Now, the key thing here for this to work is that the frequency always stays the same. So F equals F on both sides. If the frequency stays the same, then if the speed becomes lower, then the wavelength must also reduce in order for the frequency to remain the same. Now in an exam, you'd be expected to draw a picture like this. It's important that when you draw it from, say, deep to shallow, that you um, make sure that your wavelength is the same on each side. But in this case, because it's slowing down in the shallow region, the wavelength will be reduced. Now, looking at the opposite scenario, if we're going to shut from shallow to deep, it's just the exact opposite idea. So here's our boundary. We've got our shallow region, and we have our deep region. In the shallow region, the waves are coming in with a constant wavelength and when they hit the deep region the waves will speed up and the wavelength will increase. So in this case we've got lambda 1 and on this side we have lambda 2 we've got velocity 1 and on this side we've got velocity 2. And the key idea here is when you're going from shallow to deep, um, the wavelength in the shallow region will be less than the wavelength in the deep region. The velocity in the shallow region will be less than the velocity in the deep region. And the frequency in both regions <clears throat> will be the same. So those are the key ideas behind how waves refract, how they speed up or slow down when entering 
um, different regions of, um, of depth in the water. Now, in an exam, they might require you to actually work out what some of these numbers are. So let's imagine that um, you're told that in the, um, in the shallow region, in case I'm going from shallow to deep, that the wavelength lambda 1 is equal to 1 meter. Let's assume that you're also told the velocity of um, in the shallow region is, say, I don't know, um, 10 meters per second. You're also told that the wavelength in the deep region is 5 meters. And you're asked to determine what the velocity is in the <clears throat> the deep region. Before we even start, we know that um, because it's going from shallow to deep, that whatever we work out, the velocity in the deep region is going to be more than 10. So how can we work this out? Well, there's a couple of ways. What we could do is we could use the formula V equals F lambda. Okay, in this case, V1 equals F lambda 1 to work out the frequency. Once we know the frequency, because we know that it's the same in both mediums, we could then use that frequency over here to work out what the unknown velocity was in the other region. Alternatively, you can go straight to a formula on your formula sheet, which actually comes as a result of putting these two equations together, and that formula states that V1 over V2 is equal to lambda 1 over lambda 2, where V1 is the velocity in the first region, V2 the second, lambda 1 is the wavelength in the first region, and lambda 2 the second. So putting numbers into the equation, uh, V1 will be the velocity in the um, will be the velocity in the shallow water. Okay, so the velocity in the shallow water is 10 divided by the velocity in the deep water. We don't know is equal to lambda 1, which is 1 meter, divided by lambda 2, which is 5 meters. So doing a little bit of rearranging, V2. Um, is equal v2 over 10 will be equal to 5 over 1, which means that v2 will be equal to 10 times 5 over 1, which is 50 meters per second. Quick check. Okay, in the deep region, we have 50 meters per second, in the shallow region, we had 10 meters per second. So yes, the wave has sped up like we would expect. So a question like that, it's probably worth it between achievement merit um, in NCEA level 2 physics. The next um, thing I want to talk about, which is a little bit more complicated, is what happens when the wave enters the boundary at an angle. So this question, we've got a slightly different scenario. The idea, the idea here is, is that we have a boundary between deep and shallow, which is on a read, which is on an angle, and our water waves are coming in in this direction here. And we represent the water waves as wave fronts like this. And of course, because this is all the same depth, we're talking about the wavelength on this side is constant. Now let's imagine that this is the, the deep side, and it's entering a, a shallow region on the other side. So what happens? Well, what we do is we treat this a little bit like the problems in light, where we have our boundary, and we also have a normal, and the normal is this line perpendicular to the boundary. Just like in the light questions, we have an angle of incidence, and the angle of incidence is the angle between the incoming wave direction and the normal. Again, just like in light, because we are going from deep to shallow, the water wave in this case is going to slow down. And when a wave slows down, it will, it will always bend towards the normal, which means this wave is going to bend at an angle like that. <clears throat> Where theta 2, the angle of refraction, is smaller than the angle of incidence. 
theta 1 is greater than theta 2 because when you're going from deep to shallow the wave slows down and when the wave slows down it always bends towards the normal. Once you've done that <clears throat> we can now draw in the refractor wave fronts and they will be perpendicular to the wave direction. So here's my wave direction here and if I try and carefully draw lines perpendicular this is kind of hard on a tablet but you get the idea okay that's quite a bad drawing and it's, it's hard to see on here but doing it properly with a ruler if you do it correctly when joining up these wave fronts and bringing them through perpendicular you'll notice that the wavelength in my shallow region has worked out to be smaller than the wavelength in the deep region. So lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2. And that makes sense because again like in the last problem we know that the velocity is going to um, drop in the shallow region and because v equals f times wavelength or lambda if the velocity drops the wavelength must also drop because the frequency remains the same. Now you may well be expected to work out what these angles are or work out what the wavelengths are and that can be done reasonably easily. We go back to Snell's law which states that n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2 and we also know that from the formula sheet n2 over n1 is equal to v1 over v2 which is equal to lambda, sorry, lambda 1 divided by lambda 2. And what we can do is we can combine these two formulas together to uh, work out what we need. Um, so doing a bit of rearranging, having a look at this, um, n2 over n1, if we divide by n1 on both sides, would be equal to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. Now looking at this, n2 over n1, n2 over n1, n2 over n1 is equal to v1 over v2 or lambda 1 over lambda 2. Therefore the formula can become v1 over v2 equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 or the formula could become lambda 1 over lambda 2 is equal to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. In other words, if you're given the angle of incidence and angle of refraction and one of the velocities, you can work out the unknown. Alternatively, if you're given two of the angles and one wavelength, you can work out an unknown. Um, a quick example of that, let's imagine that in the um, example I drew up here, that the angle of incidence was given to you as being equal to, um, let's say, 40 degrees. Let's say the angle of refraction is equal to 10 degrees. The velocity in the shallow region, sorry, the deep region, will make equal to 10 meters per second, and you're asked to work out what the velocity is in the in the deep region, sorry, the shallow region. Okay, so what you do here is you'd apply this formula here. Put numbers into the equation and we're going to have v1 is 10 divided by v2 we don't know sine of theta 1 uh, which is sine of 40 degrees divided by the sine of 10 degrees so therefore doing a little bit of rearranging <clears throat> v2 divided by 10 sine of 10 divided by sine of 40 degrees which means that V2 is 10 times sine of 10 degrees divided by the sine of 40 degrees. Okay, grab the calculator out. 10 times the sine of 10 degrees divided by the sine of 40 degrees gives us an answer of 2.7.
meters per second. Just to confirm that we're on the right track, 2.7 was our V2, our V1 was equal to 10. The velocity has reduced, <clears throat> which makes sense because when you uh, have a water wave going from a deep region to a shallow region, we know that three things are true. Number one, well actually four things are true. Number one, the, um, the wave will slow down. <clears throat> it will bend towards the normal. The wavelength will reduce. And all of that is true because the frequency will be will remain the same in both cases. Uh, drawing a diagram like the one I've shown you here accurately and then using a formula to work out the unknowns can be worth anywhere between merit and excellence.